What up, Pokemon Peaks? How are ya? Yes, I am literally putting on another spooky Thursday story on. Oh, I don't know, Thursday? Yep. And before we get in the video anymore, let's see, make it big. Uh, I would like to invite, if you're new here, hi, I'm Nikki, and I have a grumpy Pokemon over here, aka Max. Um, <laughs> um, and, oh, crap, um, what was I saying? <laughs> anyway, Airhead, if you like spooky stories and all things paranormal, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, don't forget to hit that bell icon so you know when I decide to actually put out new videos, just as paranormal, which hopefully I can do every Thursday. Now this is about a place that is near and dear to my heart that your girl has been both as a camper and as, for a short time, uh, employed there. And I can tell you this cast has done and will go on to do so much, so much good for kids with disabilities of all sort, of all types. And oddly enough, it was first opened to care for malnourished and see, malnourished and underprivileged children before going and opening or focusing on primarily the therapy-based camp that is today. This camp is called Baycliffe Health Camp, and it's. Located 25 miles off or 25 miles northwest of Marquette in Big Bay, which gorgeous else it boasts gorgeous views of Lake Independence. Lake Superior has obviously hardwood forests, woods. Um, oh, you want to know? Okay, later, kid. Um, let's see. And it was, um, it was built in 1934 and is comprised of obviously numerous cabins, lunch halls, common rooms, meeting spaces, and outdoor parks. And if you have been to camp or seen anything camp related or know anyone that went to camp, you always know that there's some sort of ghost stories, whether they're just made up, stretched to it, or I don't know, just urban legends like this one. This is about Cabin 13 at, like I said, Baycliffe Health Camp. Um, let's see here, more background. Uh, Baycliffe is, let's see here. It's a non-profit summer therapy camp for kids, for children who need just a little extra assistance with um, occupational vision and hearing therapy, or er, vision therapy, like I said, and it's a 130-acre property. So anyway, rumors have been going around about this camp, and it's I love you too, Finley. And the spirits that live in Big Camp. But none other kind of affects me even more than this sad story about a little boy named Sam, who was also grew up in Ishman, my hometown, and unfortunately he grew up poor, and his parents wanted him to have, you know, to be a little bit social, to have the summer camp experience, and this poor kid skip around here. This poor kid his vision is so bad. He has he had to wear big round or yeah, big round glasses that were so thick. They were I guess you could say cloak bottle glasses. Don't quote me on that, I can be wrong. But anyway the story goes that let's see here. Helen thirteen is reported that there was a, I guess, a child named Sam staying at the camp that committed suicide, and his ghost 
is still there in that cabin today. Uh, it's a, the cabin itself is a large L-shaped common building that, is, that has been nicknamed Santa's Place as it, like I said, is a place where he decided to end his life. Um, let's see here. Something else about Sam, he was a phenomenal artist. It's said that his walls are just filled with not only his pictures, but art, other artists that he looked up to that he admired. But one day, or one night at camp, or so the story goes, um, that one of the other camp residents, one of the other campers, decided to be horrible. And bully this poor kid because of his quote unquote nerdy appearance and the size of his and the size and shape of his glasses. Poor kid. The, the camper continued to bully Sam by destroying his artwork and stomping on his glasses. Poor kid. Not having the ability to see to recreate his artwork, poor Sam decided to unfortunately fell into a severe depression and he went to the center room of like I said of the sounds place and found and used the sharp tip of an old feather knife or feather pen and used it as a knife to end his life. Now, his ghost, Sam's ghost has been said to haunt Cabin 13 to this very day. Residents in the cabin have claimed that heavy paintings that were hung on the wall would fall to the ground during the night, waking them up. Then, just as they were, you know, just... When they decided to get up and go and fix these paintings and pictures, the pictures would float up on their own, but not be hung right side up, but upside down instead. Also, it's been also said that kids staying in that cabin have been, numerous have been going to the, um, infirmary to get shards of glasses glass out of the foot and the glass is said to be or shards of glass are said to be from Sam's glasses. Wow, oh, poor kid. I don't know what you guys think. Do you believe this? I do. You know poor kid bullying is just horrible enough. And anyway, yeah. So, like I said, on my the article, I'll link below so you guys can look at it and see what you think. And questions, comments, all things social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, of course, Instagram, Google Plus, on hopefully soon Snapchat and. Always down here. You can. I love to hear your stories and what you think. And thanks again for hanging out with me and spending program over here. And just remember, just because October's over, doesn't mean the spooking is. Till next Thursday. I'll see you later. Bye.